Hey, what's up guys? It's Justin at Salt Strong. And if you're a power fisherman, if you like covering a lot of water quickly, and especially if you're fishing in dirty water scenarios, you guys need to take a look at this Z-Man iStrike Chatterbait. I'm super excited to add this as a new product to our shop page, fishstrong.com. And if you guys have seen a little video that I put out back in March or April, I am a huge fan of underspins, spinner baits, anything that increases flash and vibration to my presentation, especially when fishing in dirty water areas. And I think you guys are gonna find this a very valuable tool to have when fishing super dirty water. So we're gonna talk about some of the pros, some of the rigging techniques, and some of the cons when you might not want to use a chatterbait in your area. And to answer the question, do chatterbaits work in saltwater? So I just want to go over some specs here on the Z-Man iStrike Chatterbait. They do make them in two different hook sizes, a 4 aught and a 5 aught. We opted to go with the 4 aught size because the length of the shank of the hook is just a little bit shorter, so it offers for better versatility if you want to use 3 inch, 4 inch, or 5 inch soft plastics. Uh, they also come in a couple different weight sizes, from quarter ounce to 3 eighth and half ounce. And we chose the 3 eighths ounce size for two different reasons. One, because this is intended to be really a power tool. You are constantly casting and retrieving and keeping this presentation on the move and having a 3 8 ounce allows you to fish a little bit deeper water if you so choose to. So if you guys that are fishing around creek mouths that are dumping out on an outgoing tide where bait is rushing out and these big flounder, trout, and redfish are waiting in ambush, this 3 8 ounce size is going to allow you to fish comfortably anything from about 2 feet of water down to 5, maybe even 6 feet if you slow down your presentation. So the Z-Man iStrike Chatterbait is going to pair well with any 3 to 5 inch soft plastic. And it's going to pair well with both types of soft plastics. Obviously, it works really well with the Z-Man Elastec material. I like the 3-inch and 4-inch Minnow Z. But it's also going to be a great combo with our 5-inch Slam Shady Bomber. And honestly, that's probably going to be my go-to power fishing combo through the fall months in really dirty water scenarios. Just gives off a really big profile. Uh, but I'm also going to match up this iStrike Chatterbait with our 3.5-inch Gold Digger. And as we start to get into a little bit cooler water, and I'm starting to fish the northeast part of Florida a little bit more for flounder in particular, I think this is going to be deadly for flounder, uh, they're going to target some of the smaller finger mullet and the mud minnows as this water temperature cools down, and I just think this would match the hatch perfectly. It's a small profile, but in dirty water, it's going to stand out really well. It's going to make it easy for these flounder and big trout to find it. So out of curiosity, because I always like trying to just find different combinations to rig jig heads and plastics, I wanted to try our Alabama Leprechaun on this Z-Man Chatterbait. And I gotta say, this, this pairs really well. A lot of people might not expect to use a, uh, a jerk shad on a chatterbait style. They might think that a paddle tail is more conducive to giving off more vibration, and that's really the name of the game. But this looks fantastic. And the first thing I thought of, especially with this size, a 3 8 ounce, Two scenarios. If you're going to be fishing a higher tide against a mangrove edge where you know those redfish and snook tuck up underneath that structure and they can be really tough to get to and you're not going to be skipping up underneath the mangroves and you just work that outside edge in a little bit deeper water, like let's say two to three feet, I think this is going to be a great presentation. You're going to get a tight wobble, you're going to get all that flash and the vibration and it's going to kind of look like a mullet or really any kind of bait fish profile that's just skirting along the edge of the mangroves. And with this 3 8 ounce size, another option to try this is instead of a straight retrieve, I think this is going to work really well bouncing. So when you pull this through the water, you're still going to get the same chatterbait action left and right on the retrieve upward. And then as it stalls, it's going to be silent on the way down. And I think that contrast, if you're going to be bouncing around deeper channel edges and deeper creek mouths, four or five feet and deeper, I think this is going to be a cool tool to have in your arsenal. So before I forget, super important, I want to point this out. What type of knot to use on a chatterbait? I would say that because this wire apparatus has a little bit of play right here in the chatter, 
I would actually tie a snug knot, like a uni knot or uh, an improved clinch knot, I think would be the best connection. When you're having a straight retrieve on a chatterbait, uh, you don't really need the loop knot for, for increased action. You're not really twitching and jerking this all around all over the place. I think you're gonna have better performance when you're pulling this to the water if you just tie a uni knot for a straight connection. So to remain unbiased in all of our reviews of the products we carry, uh, we just want to address some of the cons and just some of the areas that you might not want to use a chatterbait. And the first thing that I can think of is this might not be the best tool to use over open, expansive, crystal clear grass flats. Uh, you know, a predator chasing down a little three and a half to four inch prey is likely not going to attack something that is drawing that much attention to itself. So again, these are, these are better suited for dirty water scenarios. You're likely going to spook a good number of fish, or if a fish comes over to investigate, there's chances are they're going to turn away last minute just because there's so much noise and it's such a loud bait that it's pretty off-putting for a prey that, that you know, normally otherwise would want to remain undetectable. Um, and the second thing is that it's not going to be, it's, you know, it's not going to be weedless, really, or even snag proof. Uh, if you're working around oysters and docks on a straight retrieve, keeping it up over above the oysters or in between the dock pilings, perfectly fine, but it's not gonna be the best tool to skip up underneath mangroves or any kind of heavy structure. Chances are you're gonna lose this setup and lose a pretty expensive uh, jig head combo, and you're just gonna wanna avoid those type of scenarios by keeping this on the straight retrieve or bouncing it over areas where you don't think there's a lot of rocks and areas that you could potentially snag. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if you're a power fisherman, and especially those fishing in murky water areas, I definitely give this Z-Man iStrike chatterbait a try. And to answer my question, do chatterbaits actually work in saltwater? My response is a resounding yes, they do. The same question applies for lures like rattle traps and lipless crankbaits, which are super noisy lures with a ton of vibration. And anglers that fish, you know, the Gulf Coast and Carolina jetties have caught some of the biggest monster redfish I have ever seen using super loud, big profiles. So under the right conditions, since this really is a tool for specific situations, these chatterbaits can be deadly. And I personally can't wait to try it out for flounder here in the coming weeks. If you want to pick up a pack of these Z-Man iStrike chatterbaits or any of the plastics that you see here in front of you on the table, you guys got to go head over to our shop page fishstrong.com it is just awesome anything that an inshore saltwater fisherman needs we have it for you and know that if you're one of our insider members you can earn up to 20 percent all of the products that you see here in front of you which is really awesome you could save a ton of money on all your tackle and it really comes in handy in the long term and as always all the lures and techniques that we mentioned here in this video can be super productive for all types of inshore game fish but the thing to remember is None of these tools are useful without knowing the where and the when to find inshore game fish. So whether you're a seasoned angler or a complete novice and you just want to increase the number of redfish, trout, snook, and flounder that you're catching, I highly encourage you to check out our Insider Club. There's nothing like it. We literally guarantee that you're going to start catching more fish in less time or your money back. And we do this by providing you with our premium education, an exclusive insider fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. So to learn more, head on over to saltstrong.com, and we will see you in the insider family soon.